How many people feel like you have mental fatigue? Right, brain fog. Sit the way you'd be sitting right now if you're totally engaged with what I was saying. And don't get lazy on this. You're like, sit the way you'd be sitting, right? Because a lot of you get more energy, you sit up. Because here's what you do. You don't have fatigue, you do fatigue. You don't have brain fog, you do brain fog. And so part of it is when you slumped over, you collapse the lower third of your lungs and the lower one third of your lungs absorbs two thirds of the oxygen. Is oxygen important for your brain? And that's why a lot of people get tired. So this is about like peak performance, right? Elite mental performance. And if you want to learn under the best conditions, put yourself in the best condition. Because I'm going to teach you skills that, that you'll have for the rest of your life. Here's what you want to remember. If you want to win the day, you have to win the first hour. If you want to win the day, you have to win the first hour of the day, right? Because there's something called the science of momentum. I think there are three supervillains that are robbing you right now. Number one is digital overload. Too much to learn, too little time. Too much information, too little time. Digital overload is one. Digital dementia, that's the idea where we're outsourcing our brains to our smart devices, and our brains are basically making us stupid. Like our smart devices are basically making us stupid, right? So I was talking to this brain doctor, he was saying GPS. If you're looking for a third party piece of technology to tell you when and where to turn, you're not getting early detection of things like dementia because you're not realizing when you would have memory lapses, so you're not going to doctors get checked out. Does that make sense? This is, this is this thing called digital dementia. And then the third digital villain is digital distraction. You're talking about focus, right? You want to improve your focus? Like where's your focus nowadays? We live in a world full of distractions. And I'll tell you the, one of the best brain hacks and you're gonna, you're gonna say like, Jim, you're interesting up to this point. Now I hate you. This is what's gonna happen. But as your coach, as your brain coach, because people have a, you know, they have a, a voice coach, they have a business coach, a personal trainer. I want to be your brain coach, right? The worst habit you could have is to pick up your phone the first hour of the day. It is the worst habit you could have when it comes to high performance. And let me tell you why, okay? The most successful people in the world, they have a to-do list, yes? All the things you need to be able to do and accomplish. The elite, the 10% of those people, I noticed, they also have a not to-do list. It's even more important. Even that list sometimes is even bigger than their to-do list, right? Because they are very clear of things they will not do because it wastes energy, it wastes focus. You know what one of the things, like one of the things on that list? Multitasking. Now in actuality, all the research is absolutely clear. There is no such thing as multitasking. Multitasking does not work. Now you could walk and chew gum and have a conversation. I'm talking about doing two cognitive activities because in actuality, you're not multitasking. In actuality, the correct term is task switching. You're going from one task to another, but you're getting this novelty dopamine fix and you feel like you're getting, you're getting stimulated and then not like the novelty and you feel like you're being more productive, but you're being busy because here's what happens. Every single time you switch from one activity to another, it takes anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes to reset your focus and your flow. Does that make sense? They do these studies with doctors and surgeons. They found that when they multitask actually increases the rate of um, error rate. So they're making more mistakes. So not only are you wasting time, but you're making more errors also on top of it. So multitasking is on that not to-do list. But the other thing on that list, when you put this on the list, you'll see big, big changes, I promise you is not pick up your phone the first hour of the day. Now, I'll tell you why. It's because we are rewiring our brains to be distracted. I'll tell you the two things that we're rewiring our brains when you pick up the phone first thing in the morning. You're training your brain to be distracted. Now think about it, opening up Instagram 100, what's the average, 150 times a day, right? And if you're not doing it 150 times a day, somebody's doing it a, a lot more, right? Which is really scary, but that's addictive, right? Because every time you see a like, a share, a comment, you get this dopamine rush, and that runs along the pathways of your motivation and your learning. So you're literally learning to be motivated by, by being triggered like that. So if that's the first thing you're picking up every in the, in the morning, you know, shares, comments, likes, cat videos, or whatever it is, then your attention is being pulled everywhere and you're training your brain to be distracted and you wonder why you can't concentrate. You know, it's, you see this on Facebook all the time that, that our, our attention span is less than a goldfish right now, that's what they're saying. Goldfish is nine seconds and, and our attention human span is about on average eight seconds. After eight seconds, our attention goes somewhere else. So here's the thing, whether that's true or not, we get the idea of where things are going. Don't pick up your phone because it's training you to be distracted. I'll tell you the second thing it's training you to do, it's rewiring your brain for, it's training you to be reactive, All right? Not just distracted, it's training you to be reactive. Meaning when you want to create a business, right? And you have a vision for where things are going, you can't be reacting to everything in the environment because what you're doing is when you wake up first thing in the morning, you go through, you cycle through brainwave states. 
and I'm not going to go through all of them, but basically, right now everybody here is in beta. That's the awake state. Delta is when you're asleep. In between are two critical states. One is called theta, and one is called alpha. Theta is the state of creativity. So when Einstein was doing all these thought experiments, he would flow in and out of the state right, right above sleep. Right? He, would, he would actually be in his rocking chair at Princeton holding a rock in his hand, and he would do these thought experiments, visualizing himself on a beam of light. And you know, luckily he has the left brain, you know, science and be able to math and formulas to be able to turn it into something. But he did this right brain's creativity, these, these thought experiments. But why would he hold the rock? Because if he fell asleep, he would what? He would drop in and wake up because he didn't want to go to delta. Does that make sense? So he wanted to stay in theta. So theta, theta is the state of creativity. You know what puts you in theta? Showers. When you take a shower, how many people when you're taking a shower, you get, you come up with all these ideas in your mind, right? You get inspired, you come up with, it's always when you can't write stuff down, right? Come up with all these ideas and that's when you come up, you're brilliant, right? So here's the thing, like showers put you in a theta state, but that alpha state between theta and beta is the state they call it relaxed awareness. Relaxed awareness. This is the state where you just absorb information. It's this hypnotic state that you're in when you meditate. This is the state that you're in of high performance a lot when you get into the zone. For example, have you been talking to somebody who's watching television and they're in a trance? They're watching sports and they're watching whatever their favorite show is and they honestly don't hear you. Like they're so, they're hypnot, they're in hypnosis, right? That's an alpha state. TV puts you into an alpha state. It's where your conscious mind is set aside and you just absorb information unfiltered, right? So we train people on how to learn languages, how to learn school material by training them to get into an alpha state. This relaxed state of awareness where you just start absorbing information like languages or foreign like facts and figures and all that kind of information. Now you are highly suggestible. So if you're in an alpha state when you first wake up in the morning, alpha theta, and you pick up your phone, you're highly suggestible. It's rewiring your brain to be reactive. Meaning if you look at a text message, a voice message, you know, your, and your emails, and you have all these things, people wanting stuff fr from you, right? You have to fight all these fires. My, my friend Brendan uh, says that an inbox is nothing but a convenient organizational system for other people's agenda for your life. Yeah, that's at his home, right? So why on earth, if you're a visionary, right? You want to create your, your day. You want to win the day. Like, why would you look at everybody else's agenda, all the fires you need to fight, and go be in reactive mode? How are you going to be proactive, right? So what I do is I have three things that I need to do every single day, personally, and three things I need to do professionally, and that's it. When I'm looking at my to-do list, I'm looking for the three things that are going to move the needle the most, right? The things, the dominoes, if you will, that are towards the beginning, not towards the end. One of my very favorite books of all time was a mentor of mine, Dr. Stephen Covey. He wrote a book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you have not re read it, read this book, all right? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. These are the habits of some of the hi most highly effective, productive people in the world. Seven habits. And the seventh habit is sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw. Remember this. If you have all this wood that you need to cut and you're given like a, a saw, but it has a dull blade, when would you want to sharpen that saw? Do you want to spend all this time suffering and struggling and sweating trying to cut wood with a dull blade? When would you sharpen it? In the beginning, right? Right, so they say that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is when? Today, right now. I get quoted on this more than anything on social media. I compare your life to an egg. If an egg is broken by an outside force, life ends. If it's broken by an inside force, life begins, right? All great things began on the inside and you have greatness inside of you, and you have genius inside of you, and now is the time to let it out.